Born on a Saturday as well, but you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. Aries, you're an Aries. Yes, I am. And you dreamt you were married to Alan Titchmarsh. I did. Yes, thank you very much. Fantasy, go! I've made a living out of giving the impression that I have paranormal abilities, but I don't. In my work, I use a mixture of magic, suggestion, psychology, misdirection and showmanship. But there are people who do claim to have paranormal abilities. As a magician, I love this promise of a mystery I can't explain. I'm also aware of how easily we can fool ourselves. So while I'm approaching this series ready to be convinced, I am aware that big claims need big evidence. <laughs> and few claims come as large as those of the Bronikoff Method, a psychic program that has its eyes set on world domination. <laughs> this is footage of students of the method. It purports to show people who are seemingly able to see, even though blindfolded. Some critics say it's fakery, but practitioners say they've developed extraordinary psychic powers, including the ability to see without using their eyes. Level three is, is extremely valuable for people who have no eyesight. The founder of the method is a charismatic Ukrainian, Vyacheslav Bronikov, who believes that his method will create a new Superman and everyone can benefit. Amongst their most intriguing claims is that they can teach the blind to see, even those without eyes. Rostov-na-Donu, it's a city in Russia. There is a boy and he was born without his eyeballs. Nobody told him he was blind and he can see better than you. Think about it. We can make blind people see who haven't got any eyes. I'm in Holland, where the Bronikoff method is making its first foray into Western Europe. For me to test the system, I need the help of a blind person. So with me is British woman Judy Dunk. She's chair of St John's Guild, a charity for the blind elderly, and has been blind herself since 1995, as she told me when we met in London shortly before our trip to Holland. It did take nearly six months to discover what it was, because right. um, it is quite rare. Um, and then she sort of said, right, you'll go blind by the time you're 40. And that horrified me. But blind doesn't mean black, which is yes. what I thought it did at that time. You can be registered blind, but it doesn't mean that you can't, you can't see, see anything. anything. Yeah. Very, only 3% of blind people can't see anything at all. Judy has limited sight, and from time to time she uses a wheelchair for a back condition. She demonstrates the level of her sight for me by writing what she can see of a word that I've written, held up for her by her carer, Margaret. Uh, it's not rude. <laughs> Now, I don't know what you've <gasps> written. What's the word? Envelope. Oh, envelope. envelope. There you go. That says envelope. Yeah. <laughs> so that's tricky, now, isn't it? Now, if you actually mm. transfer that to everything that I look at... Yes. ..then you've got some idea of, just of how I see things. This is the baseline from which any improvement in Judy's sight must be measured. Although she shares my scepticism, Judy is intrigued by the claims made for the Bronikoff method. That was it. Well, there is one phrase on the website, on their website, yeah. that actually states, we can make blind people see who haven't got any eyes. We'll give it a go and we'll see. Um, so, Darren, what do we know about this man, Mr Bronikoff? Uh, not a huge amount. He's a very elusive character. He, uh, he has a real legend around. Slightly kind of Rasputin-esque, I think. Yeah. Our first stop is this former church near Amsterdam. It is to be the first Bronikoff school for the blind where partially sighted people will be taught to see. The school will be run by a blind couple, Jan and Tina Visser. Tina claims to have already benefited from the method. What is your aim for having the Bronikoff Centre here? Oh, for the centre, of course, the awareness, I think, is very important. Mm. And it's a, a big adventure to see how far you can go. Mm. Well, 
Let's go for uh, try and see some things. Yeah. I already saw colors. What's your experience of it, yeah? Uh, the same uh, like Tina with mm. the colors, with co colored paper, I told you. Uh, I saw it in just in front of me and also uh, with some sh uh, shapes. Mm. You're talking about actual physical vision when you're saying you're seeing colors. Yeah, there were colors around me. I was in it, I, it was completely around me. Oh, Whoa! Fantastic. And it was very emotional. I can imagine this. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. It sounded wonderful. I was aware of Charles Bonnet syndrome, where blind people can convincingly hallucinate. But was this something else? I was intrigued. What would you, at a very personal level, hope to gain from using the Bronikoff method? Well, everybody is expecting me to say, uh, I guess, I want to see. No, 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 no. <laughs> but this longing is not so strong in me because I'm so uh, used to, to who I am and how yeah, I live. Yeah. And, but of course, it's so interesting, and that's a weak word, exciting mm -hmm. to, to explore. Right. Yes. So yes, I hope to make progresses, of course. <laughs> Tina and Jan are keen to show me what it is to be blind. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, trust okay. you. Okay, come on. They've designed a kind of everyday obstacle course in which sighted people are plunged into darkness and taught how the other senses come into play. Right here, the bird. It sort of smells and it seems very nice. It was extraordinary. I could tell, for example, the shape and size of my environment just through sound. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, yeah. And I was guided through different soundscapes from parks to busy roads. Very good. Yes. Good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. It's amazing mm -hmm. to notice how much you are noticing yes. without noticing that you're noticing. You know, is it uh -huh. just just to be aware of what you can what you can pick up that you mm -hmm. just simply don't bother paying attention to. Mm. But also, just an insight into, into your world. I know that's mm -hmm. sort of obvious, but mm -hmm. um, there's a big difference between sit sitting down with somebody who's blind yes, and then suddenly feeling very close to you in there and kind of mm -hmm. feeling like we're both, we're both sort of sharing this. It's a very different, it's a very different thing. Now I wanted to know if the Bronikoff method's claim of training the blind to see will be fulfilled for Judy when we attend their four-day course. We will take part in the beginner's course, level one. Although we're here to test the Bronikoff method's claim to create a world without blindness, this psychic system actually sells itself as a method of human development, offering uses in wider medicine, finance, even architecture. In fact, on the courses I'll be attending, only a tiny percentage of people are actually blind. According to the Bronikoff's proponents, over 300,000 people worldwide have taken the course. And it's not cheap, starting at nearly 700 euros for level one. The course is being taught by Vladimir Bronikov, the son of the founder and the man featured in the publicity material. But these could just be simple tricks. And there have been accusations that they're achieved just by looking down the side of the blindfold or even through small holes at it. Certainly, many conjurers perform far more impressive blindfold stunts. Vladimir has been shown having difficulty replicating these feats when the possibility of cheating is removed. One of the leading figures in the movement is Peter Kamp, a Dutch technology expert who had tried to explain to us how the system works using a Hollywood-style analogy. And let's make a short step to the film The Matrix. See, in The Matrix? I like The Matrix, yeah. It's like a nice movie, isn't it? Matrix. It's yeah. a really cool movie, and we like it a lot. Because it explains what we do. OK. It explains what it is, only they do it a little bit slightly different than we do. So we've got a material world. So when we look outside, I see your body, I see yours, I see a cameraman, I see this board. This is in the material world. Mm -hmm. yeah? When we dream, we are in a non-material world. And there's a world in between, which is reality, we call it. When Nano was a computer nerd in the Matrix, he was in this world. 
Then he took a pill and he moved to this world. And there he is, he's trained in all kinds of things like martial arts and he used it when he came back in this world. We don't shift bodies, but we only shift consciousness. So when we put on our blindfolds, our masks, we move to this space, we trained here and we turn it off again and we are back here. That's what the Matrix is. You stay in Wonderland. The movie's dystopian vision of a future world in which the protagonists shuffle painfully between different levels of reality reflects much of what the followers of the method believe they are able to achieve using only their minds. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. From this rather eccentric start, things got stranger, as Peter went on to explain that the method has 18 levels, only three of which have been worked out. Mm -hmm. Level one teaches students how to generate the energy necessary to apply the Bronikov method. If I'm looking now, my brain get the energy because light is coming through my eyes. But as soon as I close my eyes, where is the energy coming from? Eurogenital system. The eurogenital system. So by doing the, the level one exercise, we improve this part. And as soon as I close my eyes, this generator starts to work. It gives energy to my brain. If I don't develop that, it will destroy you. The brain would be drawing energy from the urogenital system that isn't there and would physically damage the body as that's well. Right. That's correct. So that's why the main thing within our method is safety rules. So much for level one. Level two teaches students how to use their psychic powers and magnetic energy fields to bypass their eyes and generate a blank screen in their mind. This they call the psychobiocomputer. And in level three, students learn how to see the real world on that blank screen, even if they're blind. And level three is, is extremely uh, valuable for people who have no eyesight. Because then your brain will see the outside world directly. But back on the course, things didn't seem to be working out so well. Any sensation there? Uh, no. no. Nothing changes. Level one is designed to teach us how to generate the energy needed to use the method. We learn how to create balls of energy with our hands, a familiar exercise I've come across before. We rub our hands together and are told to feel the resultant odd sensation in the hands as an energy ball, and one that can then be transferred to and held by another person. I must have really dead hands. Yeah. Why don't you try it with, yeah, you try it yeah. with uh, Judy? Because you're, at least we know that half of it will be... <laughs> Sorry, it really doesn't feel any different. Doesn't matter. What we do, we will move on. So we will... I will go up your hands and we'll take the ball... So I will up. tell you if I feel no, it. it's OK, it's OK. OK. Of course, it's one thing to imagine you have an energy, another for it to be real enough to pass on to someone else. So I'm not surprised that we didn't have much success. Now we learned how to use our urogenital areas to generate the energy that would eventually make it possible for us to create a blank screen in our mind, which the Bronikovs call a psychobiocomputer. While Judy and Margaret are only taking the level one course, I was allowed to observe the advanced level three. This is the zenith of the method, where we hope to see X-ray vision being developed as the students learn to control the objective outer vision that will help them to see through their blindfolds. Blind or sighted, the course offers this extraordinary possibility to all. 
Knowing what the mind can achieve, I want to look at the evidence and see if this course lives up to its amazing claims. Vladimir communicates with his multilingual audience through translators. Now I watch the level three students performing a key technique known as a splash, <laughs> releasing the urogenital energy in a seemingly powerful instant. The splash is um, raising the energy from the urogenital system. Mm -hmm. Bring it up. So first you close your eyes. Mm -hmm. and you make a cloth over here. Mm -hmm. you bring it up. And when you have enough pressure in your head, you throw it out very fast. So you open up your eyes very mm -hmm. fast. And then the energy comes out. Yeah. It's yeah. This is how you prepare the body energetically. Yes. As a safety. Yes. As a safety. Okay. And you can feel energy coming out. Vladimir was testing in front of people's eyes if there really was a hit. Oh, that's what he was doing. He yeah, was testing. You feel the hit. I see. And as soon as you have done a level two or level three exercise, mm -hmm. you put on your mask. And you have you've started your your psycho bio computer. And you turn it off. Then you end with the splash to come back in this reality in, in, in a normal way. And your brain are in a normal state again. On this first day, I saw no signs of alternative vision. Instead, they worked on remembering large quantities of information in a flash. It was intriguing, but even with this, no one seemed to have any clear success. Our first day of the Bronikov method had felt endless to me, so I wondered what Judy and Margaret had made of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't quite understand what we're supposed to be feeling or mm. what these sort of fields of energy are supposed to be about. Mm. He talks about imagining a ball of energy, feeling a ball of energy, and you can sort of do that to an extent in your head, but then it... it that only goes so far, then you sort of feel you have to kind of play along a little bit after that, because there's a pressure. If somebody's saying, say yes when you feel this energy reach yes. your elbow, yes. and they're standing there waving their arms around, after, you just feel after a while you've got to say yes just to... Well, that's right. Yeah. So that, to please them, in to a sense. To please them, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Some of us, what I would call a bit off the wall, yeah. definitely a bit off the wall. But let's see what today brings. Maybe there will be things that begin to make sense of yesterday. Yeah. And what the day held in store was something quite special. Vladimir had agreed to give Judy a diagnosis. Using his skills of alternative vision, he would look inside Judy's body and diagnose her condition. He claims to be able to see right inside her and describe exactly where the problems lie. This I was looking forward to. It could provide actual tangible evidence of those X-ray skills. We were joined by a translator. Yes means that he turned on his psychobank computer. Сначала можно посмотреть смещение позвонков. Шейный отдел 3-4 влево. Седьмой первый грудной назад. И в поясничном отделе 4 немножко влево. И копчик смещен по часовой стрелочке. Чуть по часовой стрелочке, чуть смещен миллиметров. Can I ask what he means by thoracic spine? То мне потом можно будет просто посмотреть грудной, где находится между шейным и поясничным. Okay. Can I, can I ask if we can direct attention to the around the eyes? No. В целом по кровообращению в эту зону вообще сильно снижен приток крови. Начинается это еще в лобной доле. Там э, венозный застой. Сами глаза как бы активного очага нет никакого. То есть, ну, yeah. как это объяснить? А, ну, активного очага нет. No То есть очень, active zone, active center, let's say. Вялые. They are very vexed. А, ткань... На дне она деформированная. Есть рубцы. Функция зрительного нерва 
Местами очень снежно, до 10-20%. This specific diagnosis gave us a chance to form a verdict on Vladimir's abilities. We could get hold of a chart of Judy's spine and compare it with Vladimir's description. Was he really seeing her spine or not? We arranged to have an X-ray sent to us. The Bronikovs had agreed that we could film the whole course, but later in the day, they'd suddenly change their minds. Um, so it's all been going quite well, but the Bronikovs have now said that we can't film the course um, for a couple of days, which is because they want to keep their techniques themselves. They're worried that somebody might copy them, so, which is fair enough. So um, I'll be attending with Judy, but we won't be filming. Uh, but we can film at the end and catch up then, so we get back in. Although taken aback by the Bronikov's refusal to let us film, I continue to attend the classes. And when my crew is finally allowed back in, we get to see the founder of the method at work, the superhuman figure, revered by so many who has reached the exalted heights of level six and even mentioned that he could levitate and that we could too. I began by asking him how he came up with the method. Actually, my story, I had 12 teachers. I was absolutely loaded with knowledge, overloaded maybe even, but in a very potent way. And you were how old at, at this time? Started from three years old, but if I, if taking it even more seriously, I came consciously into this body. That was my choice. I actually was aware about coming into this life before I actually was born. And when I was born, I had a lot of capacities already. I want to talk about the ball of energy for a moment. Um, when you do this, you feel a tingle in your hands, and you can your muscles kind of create a, sensation, a sensation of, of pulling away. So I can understand how you can imagine that might feel like a ball. I don't understand how you make the leap from an imaginary ball, a sensation in your fingers, to then placing that somewhere where other people can feel it and touch it and, and move it around. I guess you didn't understand anything. When we wrap our hands between two parts of the brain, we create a connection. And this connection actually works and transforms. And everything else is secondary, individual. Everything works inside of the brain. I would love to see the evidence. I really would love to see the evidence. Let your scientists organize in England. They will let them organize the scientific commission. We'll come and it will work. And you will study from the very beginning till the very end. Well, maybe my problem is, is that I haven't seen somebody who can really look at a box and see something that's inside it. Is it possible? I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to embarrass you, but is it possible for somebody at level six and somebody with your skill to be able to do the test? They were doing a test. They were looking at a box and seeing what was in it. Is it, is it possible? Unfortunately, you form a negative show, documentary. You create problems for yourselves. You don't have scientific approach and you don't have basic knowledge of this technology. Do you understand what you're talking about? What do you want? 
I'm trying to understand. I'm, I suppose maybe I'm being naive, and if I am, I apologize. But I, I I want to see a result. In the first place, you create advertisements for your own. You show yourself as a not serious organization. Will I be playing circus here, studying boxes and things? This is not serious. But you teach people to do this. You want, you want science? Let's do science. You teach this at level three. Yeah. I am not playing anything with you, okay. and I won't prove anything to you. Okay. So there is something called Charles Bonnet syndrome, which is where blind people hallucinate, can hallucinate, and uh, think they are seeing things on the outside world, and it is very convincing for them. Now, it would be, do you think it would be unfair if if blind people were being persuaded that that was actual? real vision when, when it, if it was just a hallucination. We don't do healing here at all. We don't do healing. We deal with human development, and I want to put it straight. If we think about self-improvement, then to me, um, becoming better people is about becoming Kinder, I think, is, is important. Do you think it's kind to tell a 16-year-old boy with cerebral palsy that he will walk and maybe develop superpowers? First of all, we're not talking about healing because we don't heal. Maybe you fix information in the wrong way. I speak of a system of development, and the system of development it means that if you create a correct development of certain functions of the brain, you can, you can improve things. We normally want to work with normal, healthy people who use their auto-training techniques for self-development. So I state again, ill people, we don't deal with ill people. We're not designed for ill people. This is for doctors only. So the slogan, world without blindness, is that, is that misleading to blind people? Should it be something else? It is working. And the results are there. Is it clear? And I see that you try to find weak spots and guess the weak spots. And I guess it's fine, because you're from England. Rostov-na-Dону, it's a city in Russia. There is a boy, and he was born without his eyeballs. Nobody told him he was blind, and he can see better than you. Think about it. There's a boy in Russia who has no eyes, and he can see perfectly. You're saying that that is true? Definitely, I'm saying what I say. Do you, do you know his name? I'd love to, I, I want to find out about this man. Do you know his name? Well, I don't have this information, only just ask. It's in Rostov-na-Dono, is the city. And this is not the first case. So I've spoken to a, a scientist who says that science doesn't take the Bronikov results seriously, doesn't take the Bronikov system seriously. Why, why is that, if the results are real? From one point of view, I am pleased that you, in England, still have no understanding of new technology software, scientific, psychological human development. And it's very nice that Russia, Ukraine and Soviet Union are on the first place of the telepathy studying. I just want to ask one, one more thing, just, just going back to this box for a moment, because I want people at home to understand that if it is not appropriate for you to do this, which is fine, I want them to know why, so they understand. You are not the scientists. Why do you do this? You are not scientists. Okay. You don't deal with proofs. And usually create anti-commercials. And this is your prevail. And you know where you belong. You do what you do. Let's do the anti-commercials. This will not work. And actually it will not work. For us anti-promotion is even better than real promotion. Make your documentary. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having us here and allowing us to film with you. And thank you for talking to us. Next time we will participate in your circus. Don't worry.
Tartus. To me, it's important whether the Bronikov's promises are backed up by real abilities. To others, the hope of extraordinary development may be enough, and of course, even false hope can be invaluable. The balance lies in ensuring that the key figures spreading and profiting from the hope are held accountable, so that people searching can make the best informed life decisions for themselves.